about extrema, we should be thinking critical points. Critical points should make us think derivative equal to zero. So let's take the derivative of this function here. The derivative of 1 half x is 1 half. The derivative of negative sine would be negative cosine. Okay. We're setting that equal to 0, and we are solving for x. So in this case, usually we don't move the variable, uh, but it's negative, and the other number is not, so I'm going to add the cosine to both sides. Cosine of x is equal to 1 half. Now these are traditionally calculator inactive questions, so you do need to be able to reference the unit circle in your mind. Where is the cosine equal to 1 half? Pi over 3. Very good. Okay. Also, it would also be in the fourth quarter, uh, quadrant. Fourth quarter. That's 5 pi over 3. Yes. It's almost 2 pi. 2 pi would be 6 over 3, so it is 5 pi over 3. So pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3 are our critical numbers. So we're going to put those on a number line um, from 0 to 2 pi. I include the endpoints here just so that I know, you know what values I can uh, choose. Okay, so pi over 3 obviously is pretty close to 0 over here, 5 pi over 3 is pretty close to 2 pi. Do you really have to have that scaled? No. I'm just giving you a visualization here. Okay, so we need to plug uh, three values into our derivative. Okay, we need to pick three test values. Um, actually, I'm not going to write that right here. I'm just going to write f prime of x. Okay, so let's pick a value between 0 and pi over 3 that's easy to test with trig functions. What would that be? Pi over 6 between 0 and pi over 3? Why not what? Why not 1? Yeah. Yeah, but do you know what the value of the cosine of 1 is? Okay. Uh, what's an easy value between pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3? Pi. Okay, and then between 5 pi over 3 and 2 pi, uh, that would be 11 pi over 6. Okay. So let's plug these into the derivative. I am actually going to write them out this time just so we can see what we're doing. We've got 1 half minus the cosine of pi over 6 is the square root of 3 over 2. Now we're talking about doing this without a calculator. Obviously, I don't know what 1 half minus the square root of 3 over 2 is. However, how does the square root of 3 over 2 compare to 1 half? Is it bigger or smaller? Bigger. Bigger. So that would be a negative result. Okay, it's bigger. How do I know that? I, I revert back to the unit circle and the way that I remember, okay, well, which one's sine and cosine because, um, or, you know, is it pi over 3 or pi over 6? Because I know that square root of 3 over 2 is, is bigger than 1 half. Okay? That's just something you've got to know. So square root of 2 is bigger than 1 half, so that's going to be a negative value. I don't care what the actual value is. It's just negative. When we plug in pi, what's the value of the cosine of pi? It is negative 1. Okay, so you're subtracting a negative. That's going to be a positive for specifically three halves, but we just care that it's positive. Okay, 11 pi over 6, well guess what? That has the same value of cosine as pi over 6 does. So that is going to be 1 half minus the square root of 3 over 2 again. 
So our result is still negative. So that means at pi over 3, our derivative changes from negative to positive, meaning my original function changes from decreasing to increasing, creating a minimum. At 5 pi over 3, my derivative changes from positive to negative, meaning my original function changes from increasing to decreasing, which means that's a maximum. Now, since it says relative extrema, typically that means that it wants the actual point, not just where, but it wants the actual point. So we need to take these two ex uh, places where the extrema occur. We know they're mins and maxes, but let's calculate what their actual value is. So plug it into the original because we're just using the derivative to identify characteristics of our original function. So we have 1 half times pi over 3 minus the sine of pi over 3. So that's pi over 6 minus the sine of pi over 3 is uh, square root 3 over 2. since the cosine was 1 half. Technically, you could put that together. You could get a common denominator there, so that that's pi minus 3 square roots of 3 over 6. Really, you just need to look at your answer choices, see what they look like. Uh, let's look at f of 5 pi over 3. So we have 1 half times 5 pi over 3 minus the sine of 5 pi over 3. So that's 5 pi over 6 minus the sine of pi over 3 is square root 3 over 2, but it's in the fourth quadrant, so sine is negative. So that's going to turn into addition. So if we did the same thing, it would be 5 pi plus 3 square roots of 3 over 6. So we have a minimum at pi over 3 pi minus 3 pi, or excuse me, 3 square roots of 3 over 6. And we have a maximum at 5 pi over 3 5 pi plus 3 square roots of 3 over 6. Okay. These are going to be multiple choice questions, so you don't have to get super bent out of shape of, of how exactly to write it. You just need to clearly identify minimum, maximum, x, and y coordinates. It, it's fine. It, that's another one of those things. Just look at the answer choices. See how they have it written. If they if they don't have two fractions, then you know that they combine them in some way. Um, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, because that, that's what we wrote down at the end of class yesterday. The first derivative test says when your, uh, when your derivative changes from negative to positive, that means the original changes from decreasing to increasing. That's the visual that I create in my mind, that my function is decreasing and then it's increasing, so I know that's a minimum. And then um, over here, it changes from increasing to decreasing, so I know that that's a maximum. I don't really, personally, I don't really memorize the whole first derivative test where, you know, if the derivative changes from negative to positive, then it's a minimum. Um, I think of it more as if the derivative's negative, that means my original is decreasing, and I visually, in my mind, picture a decreasing to increasing function, that's a minimum. Okay? Okay, let's look at another function here f of x is equal to x squared minus 4 to the 2 thirds. Okay. 
Now, we kind of need to get in the habit of when we're given a function to kind of visualize what we're talking about here. Uh, this is obviously kind of a strange function. It's raised to the two-thirds, but think about what the two-thirds power means. Power over root. That means we're squaring an expression and we're taking the cube root of it. So we're not going to have any issues with our domain, okay? Because if you square something, the result's always going to be positive, okay? But even if we didn't square it, you can take the cube root of negative numbers as well. It's just you can't take the square root of negative numbers. Cube roots are, cube roots are fine of negative numbers. Um, so we don't have any domain issues here. All right, so let's go ahead and proceed by taking our derivative and setting it equal to zero because it asks for extrema. Extrema come from critical numbers. Critical numbers come from setting the derivative equal to zero. And yes, it is tedious that I keep on repeating that, but the more you hear it, the more it's going to get ingrained. That, that's just your natural reaction. Taking the derivative of this, it's a chain rule. Bring down your exponent. Subtract 1 from the exponent, don't forget that part, times, also don't forget to multiply by the derivative of what's on the inside. The derivative of the inside is 2x. So when I set this equal to 0, I'm also going to kind of clean things up a little bit. Um, that is 4x, I multiplied the 2 times the 2x. That's a negative power. What does that mean? I'm going to move it to the denominator. So I had 3 in the denominator, and I'm also going to move the x squared minus 4 to the 1 third to the denominator. Now, don't forget, critical numbers are not only when the, uh, when the derivative is equal to 0. Critical numbers also occur when the derivative is undefined. Okay? which only happens in cases where we have denominators. Well, guess what? We have a denominator here. So not only do we need to set the numerator equal to 0, we need to set the denominator equal to 0. So setting the numerator equal, divide by 4. Do I really want you to write out, take the time to write out divided by 4? No, I'm just trying to show my work when you look back at the examples. Okay. On the AP exam, please save yourself some time. Don't write out every single step. Okay, over here, divide by 3. Well, when you divide 0 by 3, you still get 0. And then we raise it to the third power. Well, we still get 0. So x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. Two ways to solve this. We can solve it by square roots. Okay. Um, by adding 4 and taking the square root, the only thing that I caution you to do uh, about that is do not forget the plus or minus. So that is plus or minus 2. Okay. Um, the advantage to factoring is that you guarantee that you get both solutions. Okay. You could have also done x plus 2 times x minus 2, and obviously that way you don't forget about the negative. Okay. You just have it in the back of your mind x squared, I should have two solutions. Okay, anytime x squared is involved, usually we have two solutions, unless it's like x squared minus 1. Okay, then, uh, well, no, you still have two solutions. Never mind. Unless it's x squared equals 0, that's the only time you'll have one solution. Okay, number line, 0, negative 2, positive 2, we need 1, 2, 3, 4 test values. You always need one more test value than you have critical numbers. I'm going to pick the simplest numbers possible. Negative 3, negative 1, positive 1, positive 3. I'll plug those into my derivative. <clears throat> Again, I really don't have to completely compute this stuff. Don't take the time to find out the exact value. The question is, is it positive or negative? That's all you have to worry about. So when we plug in negative 3, the numerator is negative because it's 4 times negative 3. The denominator, let's see here, I square negative 3, so that becomes positive 9. 9 minus 4 is 5. I don't care what the cube root of 5 is. I just know that it's positive and I'm multiplying it by